lot of people want me dead. They call it justice. I'm the only one who knows the truth. All I have left is the wind by my side. Hey guys, welcome to a new guy video. Today I'll show you guys how to play Yasuo. I build a sequence on Yasuo, you max out Q for the damage and wave clear, E second for the mobility and magic damage, and then your W last. Last breath is Yasuo's main engage tool that also gives him bonus armor pin to shred any target, so make sure to put points into this whenever possible. Alright guys, so how you play Yasuo in the early stages of the game, so you want to start out with your Q level 1 here, because that is your main damaging tool on a really low cooldown. So we're playing against the melee matchup here, so what we want to do is that we want to play really aggressive, so whenever they walk up to CS, we want to try to hit them with an auto attack and a Q. There are really few champions who can actually match Yasuo level 1. Um, I really can do that if she has a passive fully stacked, but otherwise we want to play really aggressive like I'm doing right here. Just try to punish her whenever she walks up to farm. Now if you play against a ranged matchup, then you just want to Stay back and then you try to get the minions you can. Now this is all about getting the two first guys because then you become really mobile and then you can look for a kill. So now we can go in here, dash to Aurelia. We have a third Q so that's basically a knock up and there we go so that's pretty free. So in a melee matchup you can always play for the level 2 power spike. If you get it first then you can be the one to engage and maybe secure a kill. So that was pretty free here. Now we can go ahead and recall so First item you want on Yasuo are the Berserkers, and you want those because your Q cooldown scales with attack speed. So the more cooldown you have, the lower cooldown, or the more attack speed you have, the lower cooldown will be on your Q. And it is up to a cap of course, but that is why you always want the uh, attack speed boots first. It also gives you a lot of mobility, so in case you get ganked, then you can also Another really cool thing you can do on Yasuo guys is that you don't have to EQ on top of the opponent. You don't have to do that always. If they stand next to a minion, then you can EQ to the minion and then you can try to hit the opponent with the AoE damage. That's a really really good way to poke people. Alright, so we have to watch out here because Aurelia has a passive full stack that even though we have first blood, she can still win the trades if we don't uh, watch out. I think Aurelia might be going top. When you last hit with Yasuo under the tower guys, when you from level 2, what you want to do is that auto attack once and then E through the minion. That's a really easy way to last it and then of course you can also use your Q whenever it is ready. But really easy to farm with this champion. Now when you play Yasuo it is very normal that you get camped by the enemy jungler. Um, you can basically avoid that if you have proper wave management. But basically only try to play aggressive if you know where the enemy jungler is. Because uh, if you don't see them then there's a very high chance that they are trying to gank you uh, mid. Right now I have such a huge minion wave with me that it doesn't really matter if the enemy jungle comes because I will still win it 1 versus 2 because that minion wave is going to help me a lot. You see I'm just trying to poke as much as possible with that Q. I know she will be going for the low HP minion so I'm trying to tie my Q. Uh, 
soon as uh, they get really low HP because she will dash to it. If we cancel the dash, then it will go on cooldown. Get some vision down here. Control ward in the brush. Put it closer to your side and not in the middle or towards the enemy side of the brush because that means that if Timo or any other ranged champion walks up, then they can easily last hit it without putting themselves at risk. Nice, she used the stun, so now we can kill her. Auto attack and Q. Remember, it is really important that you weave in auto attacks. That's something a lot of Yasuo players don't for some reason. Um, It's a huge part of your damage at all stages of the game, so you always want to weave in all the attacks and not just use your Q for damage. The Hecarim is doing the Drake here, so we want to show this in. Because then we can move in case he gets ganked. Doesn't look like anyone is coming, so we can go ahead and recall. And we got the Drake as well, so that's a really good uh, vector control by Hecarim. Now we have the Berserkers, and as I said early on, you always want Berserkers first because your Q cooldown scales with attack speed. So that's actually a small power spike when you get the Berserkers. And then we also get the Shield Bow first item. I know a lot of PU people have seen the uh, Rage Blade. Uh, yeah. Quinzel's Rage Blade build on Yasuo. That's really good. But it's mainly preference because there are so many different builds Yasuo can use right now because a lot of items gives you crit now. The thing with Ginsu's Rage Blade though is that it is getting nerfed so that's why I'm not showing it this game here but I still have the build in the intro screen. Right so Aurelia is not walking up here. If she is then we can go in here. We just need to play around her uh, E has done. Go. Of course Yasuo is really good at punishing people when he gets the lead because he's so mobile. We can push now and we should also be able to get a plate. We also need to help out Botlan soon. Oh, there's the team coming in. Alright, let's get out of here. I should actually base right now because I can easily get killed. But I still want a little bit more gold. You should not greet like I'm doing right now. Because we have a gold bounty, so it's much better if we back off. The thing is, Aurelia is level 6, so she can actually fight back. Um, should've used a win wall right there. But... There's a really weird interaction with uh, Aurelia's E and Yasuo's win wall. The way you block her E is that you have to do it after she threw both of her blades. So when the line is about to form, that's why you can use the win wall. You cannot use it at the start because it will not block it. So it can be confusing at times and I also ended up dying here for it. But you can basically uh, win wall her ultimate. That would have been even better if I did that. Or you can win wall her E when the line is about to form. But even if she doesn't hit it then if she has a fully stacked passive then she is really strong and you have to respect that as well. Oh, 
all is going down. So the thing is, I cannot really roam right now because if I roam bot, then Timo is going to th uh, throw down the Herald in the mid lane and then I might lose my tower and that's not worth it at all. Especially not when it is before 40 minutes in the game because... The tower plays up and we have a Pantheon gang coming in. I can see if I can hold this guy over the wall. Nice. There's some distance between him and Aurelia so they will not be able to engage. So nice. We can also get the... Oh what? Okay he flashed. We can actually go for the dive here. That's a minion way coming in. Let's go. I'm gonna tank the tower here. Then hacker him. And hopefully finish him off. Nice. Really good counter gang by Hikarim as well. Oh, he used the Herald top. Oh, can she get the kill? Nice. Really well played by Akali here. Am I still die though? Oh, the minions trolled that they stepped on this room. That's so tilting. Anyways, we are getting the tower top side. Got the first tower, so that's great because that gives you bonus gold. And we don't make the same mistake as last time in greed, so we're just gonna go ahead and back off. Actually, we can wait a little bit, but under the tower this time, because we need a little bit more gold uh, for the uh, seal bow. Alright, she is pushing, so we just have to step back here. Now, seal bow is such a good item on Yasuo, uh, you get so many stats and you also get lifesteal on a core item, that is so OP in for the laning phase guys. Sustain is so insanely OP in the laning phase and you also get a shield, a lot of damage so that's why I really like buying this as the first item. But the thing is if you're going to Ginsu's build then of course you want the Ginsu's first. And then you can buy one or two cloaks because Skinzo's passive gives you bonus uh, on hit damage based on the crit you have. Okay, so now we can go ahead and buy the shield bow, so that's the first core item on Yasuo. Bot lane, that'd be great. Okay, Hecarim's coming in, nice. Great, and I got the shutdown as well. Well, second item, the Bloodthirster guy, so as I said early on, you can buy a lot of different items on Yasuo right now, because a lot of the AD items now have crit built into them. And it doesn't really matter if you have more than 100% crit on Yasuo, because they changed it in the preseason, so when you have more than 100% crit, then it will be turned into bonus AD. Right, we can take out the wards here, so that's why it's really good to have control wards. I still bought one extra though in case they took it out. That team was actually going to be really really annoying for us later on in the game, because they can block me and Jin out. This should be a free kill right here. Gonna ignite and a Q, nice. Pushing here, so there's also another way you can carry if you're able to stomp your opponent so much, they can just keep pushing down the middle lane, and then you basically force people from the enemy team to react to you. The rip off is nice. Hecarim should come here, then we can take it. Demo coming in, block his Q. There we go, nice. If you block his Q, then we can win this easily. Nice, we can go for Urgot as well, but I need help here. He has so much damage, it is insane. Oh, that was so close, he almost died. Okay. Played by Hikarim. I think he was actually doing the trick, but he left it to help us, so that's really a good scene by him. It's really important that you have this kind of a map awareness when you want to climb. Right, we have a lot of golds, of course. When you go for the Bloodthirster, you want the BF Sword and the Cloak first, because you get double crit from your passive, so... Get those items first if you can afford it, otherwise you can go for the Vam Scepter, but you already have some kind of sustain. From the Seal Bow, so it's not like you need the Vam Scepter, but it is going to help you heal up more... Uh, 
easily. This build gives you so much sustain that you just need a couple of minions to auto attack and then you'll be full HP again. That's why I think this is his best build at the moment. Five. Oh, nice touch, nice sidestep, and nice Q as well. She's dead. She must be so tilted right now. Get win here. There's two. Nice. That's no way for her to escape. We also get the second Drake. Great. Unfortunately, top lane died though. I'm just gonna ignore whatever that is. That's probably a control board. And then I hit to mid so Timo doesn't take out my tower here. Want to play around the objectives always. That is what matters the most. Need to go into the top jungle because I think Timo might be on the rip off here. We don't want to give it over to him. Oh, there he is. Get him. Oh, he flies. What? There's no way he makes it out. Yeah, I'm not gonna keep chasing here. Yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead and farm. Take the rip off as well. Okay, Jin wants to go top. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take the rip off. And then we can go and defend mid. So Yasuo in the mid game guys, there's a lot of things you can do when you play this champion in the mid game. You can split push because Yasuo 1 vs 1 is stronger than most champions in the game. Um, if you're even or ahead of course. Heals really well in a 1 vs 1. Does it really good in the team fights if you have some champions on your team who can provide a knockoff for him. For example Malphite, that's really perfect for you or a Gragas. Doesn't have to be knock ups only, it also works with the displacement ability, so Frontal's pillar also works. But you don't have that much time to react to his pillar, so you have to be really fast to press your ultimate, but that also works. If you have that then you can group with your team. Oh I had to dash out here, she can easily kite me. You never want to throw your tornado directly at the opponent, but in the direction you think they will be dashing towards. Because the moment you throw it, they will start dodging before they can even see where it's headed. That's what most people do, and that's why we hit Wayne right here, and now she's dead. She is also super tilted right now. Alright, I can help Hecarim with the Herald. He can solo though, but we do see team here, that's why I'm staying. Now, when you have a lot of attack speed guys, this is a really important combo you need to do. Basically, before you use your ultimate, then you want to go in and E plus Q them. So you get some extra damage off, but also so you get one extra stack on your Q, so you have your tornado up much faster. That is really important to do on Yasuo. Something you can do when you have enough attack speed. When you don't have enough attack speed for that yet, what you want to do is that you just throw in one auto attack before you use ultimate. Also if possible, try to use your ultimate at the last possible second. So keep, uh, you keep people CC'd for as long as possible. Because that is really going to make a huge difference in teamfights because every single second matters. No champion can 1 vs 1 win if she is fit. Really strong champion this patch because it is tank meta and she's the best ADC to uh, destroy tanks because of the true damage on W. So, because her win rate will be much higher. Yasuo's win rate is still a negative win rate, but that's how it is on a popular champion. Oh, Timus went invisible here. I am not sure what he was trying to do here. I think I'm going to let Akali get the kill. Push for the objectives of the dragon is also spawning soon, but we can take the tower here. Hikrim has the herald. 
You can also go for the kills. Get a double knock up, nice. Go. Good. Coordinated by my team here. Oh, that tornado did not hit. That was strange. Probably had to back off here because multiple people are coming in. And the problem is Timo's uh, blind. Because if he doesn't have a blind, then we can easily win this. I might die here, but maybe Akali can clean up. They focus on me. That's good. Then Akali can get the kills. Nice. Yep to get the uh, inhibitor, or maybe not. Anyways, we get the Infinity Edge. Compared to last season, guys, you do not want to get this item early. I mean, you can, but it is not that effective early on anymore because it scales based on how much crit you already have. So that's why you want to have some crit already before you buy this item. So it's good to buy after your seal bow, Bloodthirster, and then you can go for the Eye Edge. Nice snipe as well. I'm just taking up on control watch here, so of course we want some armor, but I really don't care about sitting on Doth Armor. Just a lot more effective having the control watch, especially when we are playing as a team with a lot of shrooms, so if our Oracle Lens is on cooldown, then we have the control watch to take out the shrooms. Kali is doing great. We got the third break as well, so next one we will be able to pressure for the uh, soul. That soul is actually really useful against Timo because we got a shield, so it's going to block out some of the damage from his rooms. Go on, I got here, get his uh, red buff back. Right, another EQ combo before you use the ultimate, so you get some extra DPS off and also get a stack towards your tornado. So the best play here would probably be to go for the Baron, so we push out mid and then we go for the Baron, cause uh, we are not grouped right now, we have two people top side, we have gen mid, so we cannot go for the inhibitor bottom side, we will just get collapsed on. The Baron would definitely be the correct play here. I cannot go for this. You see Pantheon and Wayne bottom side. But we don't know how many shrooms he has, so not worth it. We can go for the Baron, that would be the best play for us, so that way we can end. Because when we have the uh, empowered minions from the Baron buff, then they'll be a lot more tanky, so it's harder for Team Mushrooms to take them out. So we can use that to push and get into the base with. Hit Jin with us. I'm not sure what he's doing with Lin. Rip. He should have been with us mid though. Oh, Baron. That's fine. We have a lot of DPS because I am so fit. Gonna ignore that control ward early on, it doesn't really give them any valuable vision at this point, so go just go ahead and push. Morgana's top side, I don't know why. Because we need um We need a shield uh, for the CC because it's going to help a lot against Timo's blind. Gonna stay here, keep uh, buffing up the minion waves so it becomes out of them to take out, so I'm just basically just staying here to be annoying. Look at the sustain I have, just one or two minions is enough for me to heal back up to full. That's why this build is so good. You have so much sustain, it doesn't really matter if anyone pokes you out, so you are 10% HP. You just find a random minion camp and then you heal up, or jungle camp. Oh no, I'm going to get feared. I'm dead. Yeah, I knew it. Ugas ultimate. When he gets killed with that ultimate, then he will fear 
everyone around him and that basically made it so I died as well. Bit unfortunate but... We should have grouped for sure. Uh, we can end this by grouping. Cannot make play solo, nice. Ray is pushing bottom side, I don't know why. It looks like it is rage splitting. I think Hecarim should be able to take it out though. She's only level 13, that should be pretty easy. I'm also spawning soon so I can help him out if he struggles, but I don't think so. Yeah, her minion is gone as well, she should be done so, nice. Really want to break open the base guys. It is annoying against the Teemo because of his room so it's important that as many people as possible have Oracle Lens here. And then if you have the space for it you also want control wards. Oh watch out Jin that's a really uh, risky pathing right there because he's isolated from uh, Morgana so they can just turn on him. Another EQ combo onto your uh, ultimate. There we go. I'm scared of the minions, that's why I walk back a bit here. I want to take the inhibitor and then we can go top. That minion my wave is almost dead. Alright, we just got tanked by a shroom, so nothing to do here, but we can do the Drake. Hecarim is already on it, so that's going to be the soul. Mountain Dragon is really good for the bonus resistances, and when you got the soul, then you get a bonus shield as well, so we will have a massive shield. Just gonna wait a bit here, in case he walks up, then I can go for the kill. Team was behind me, okay, that's on me. Kill. Oh, okay. Just gonna win wall here so I can block out Urgot's damage. This is also what makes Yasuo a pretty decent pick into Urgot, cause um, most of his damage comes from uh, ranged projectiles, so you can, your win wall can pretty much block it out. So now we can take the inhibitor, but we cannot really push to end the game cause we don't have a minion wave. Wayne is pushing mid, she took out the entire wave. Already I was also pushing bottom side, so we have the inhibitor now, so the base is open at least, so it should be easier for us to end the game. Not sure if I should help them, I think they should be able to win, but you never know with Wayne. The true damage and her invisibility had to play around. Okay, she's dead, right? Okay, great. Ekrim was still really low HP though, even though he has a 3 level advantage and he's really fed. So that's why I walked up just in case, cause you, don't, you never know. You never know with a win, she can always 1 versus 1 someone, even though she's super far behind. And we need people to come topside, cause our mid and bottom side is gone, so there's no reason for us to be there anymore. Can hit a Q? Oh nice she did. Okay now we can go for it. Go. I can tank the tower for so long. Look at my sustain. I'm already full HP just from hitting one cannon minion. That's why I'm just tanking right now. I have so much sustain. Now look at my health bar when I hit a minion. Look at how fast I heal back up. There we go, and we have full HP. Just took one second, that's why I really like this build. And you don't really lose damage, you actually get damage because this is crit build. Oh, so annoying shrooms. Alright, see if we can go for the end here. Oh, nice knock up as well. Oh, I might actually be dead here. I need to flash. Okay, I'm dead. Ben flash too. That's a bit greedy by me here. Going for Morgana, yeah. 
Get him, Jin? Yeah, I should be fine. Nice. Oh, really nice high step. He has so much damage. Wow. Alright, so we greeted a bit here. So now our game plan is to... The easiest way to end the game right now is to take the Baron. So all three minions, uh, all three lanes of minions will be empowered. So team Timo's rooms will not be able to take them down that easily. So we should just wait for everybody to spawn. Then we go for the Baron and then we can go ahead and end the game here. Oh, well, if we can take team out, then that's going to be an e even easier Baron. Okay, they do have a Kali, so it should be fine. This should be a pretty free kill for us. Hecarim still has his ultimate up. Go. I'm not sure if they both needed to use the ultimates. Gonna take the safe way here. Timo's dead, but his room is still around in the base everywhere, so... Taking out the Baron first is going to make it so much easier for us when we want to end the game. The inhibitor is also respawning soon, so this was the right call. Now we can go ahead and push. Morgana is recalling, she probably has a lot of gold, so we also have to wait for her. But now we can go ahead and try to end. Using the uh, sweeper here, so we can scout out the shrooms first before they hit the minion wave. I can tank the shrooms easily because I have a lot of sustain. Gotta play it slow here, I don't want to be chasing all the way, just want to keep her away from the minion wave so she cannot uh, take it down. Take the tower guys, I cannot walk up here because of Timo. Now I have my windmill up so it should be a lot safer. Anything coming in, we should turn on this guy. Nice. I got you, I got. We can get Wayne. Wayne is dead. Nice. And we got the hit on her. Alright guys, so this is basically how you play Yasuo in the new season. So of course, I hope this was helpful. And as always, thank you so much for watching and see you guys in the next video.